Hello, I'm W.T. Edmondson and welcome to FOCUS. Freedom often causes unbelievable silence. FOCUS, of course, uh, intent is to inform, educate, and motivate our viewers to action. July the 25th through the 28th, alumni will be returning to Jefferson City for the 73rd Lincoln University Alumni National Convention. The convention comes to uh, Jefferson City occasionally, and this is a very special time, of course, in that Lincoln University has its new president, Dr. Uh, Kevin Rohn. Our guest today is Ms. Sylvia Wilson. Uh, she is the vice president of the Jefferson City chapter of the National Alumni Association, and she is here to bring us up on what is going on uh, this coming week here in Jefferson City. Uh, Ms. Wilson is also an employee of Lincoln University, where she serves as director of auxiliary services. She is a 1983 graduate of Lincoln University. Welcome to Focus. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, before we get into what's going to be going on uh, this coming week, uh, tell us a little bit about Sylvia Wilson. Okay, um, well, currently I am a resident of Jefferson City since 2002. Uh, I've returned to the community and proudly served the university. Um, and my spouse and I have three children, Eudoria, Yvonne, and Imani. And uh, Eudoria is a student at Lincoln University. Edward is also a student at Lincoln University. Um, we attend the Solid Rock Family Church. Um, we serve the community in various capacities with different organizations and with our, our church and in our neighborhood. Um, there's not a lot to tell. We okay. Well, I, uh, like I said, understand the theme for this convention is a race to the top, sustaining the LU legacy through you. Tell us what does that mean? What that means is that uh, a race to the top is an interface with the Obama administration's initiative, A Race to the Top. It is an inspiration for higher education and education across the board, K through 12, and higher education to raise the standards of education for all of our youth, but particularly underserved populations. We do that by encouraging, uh, having higher expectations on their performance in the classroom particularly in math, science, technology, and engineering. We chose to tap into the theme of a race to the top, sustaining the LU legacy through you, because we want to inspire our alumni locally, nationally, and globally to be more engaged and involved in moving Lincoln forward and continuing and improving its legacy, not only locally, but globally. And so we, we, uh, we wanted to take the opportunity to make sure we're on the same page and in lockstep with the positive aspects of what the Obama administration would ask for the citizenry of the United States to do. Uh, now this is a four day convention. Uh, run through for us uh, what's going to be taking place uh, through that time. Okay, the, the short version is that um, our convention is about the business of the Lincoln University Alumni Association on a national and local scale. So our first order of business is to take care of the business of the association. Uh, business meetings, discussions about bylaws, finances, uh, plans of improvement, plans of engagement. How can we best serve Lincoln University now as alums and how can we help the university to satisfy its mission and help the students that are currently there at the university. Um, after that, there are always opportunities for social engagement. So we have several social activities planned. And we also have um, several breakout education sessions planned that give us information about things that are trendy, things that are moving forward. We very much would like to ensure that we're on the national trend with what's going on with our sister institutions. We want the same thing here at Lincoln University. And as alumni, we feel it's our duty to try to help move that uh, plan of action forward. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about um, the Board of Directors meeting. What, what, what takes place there? Well, at the Board of Directors meeting, you'll have your executive uh, members, or your president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, um, the chapter presidents. They will meet and discuss the business of the association. Uh, the program is set by the national officers, so that is not something that 
the uh, constituency or the uh, officers outside of the presidency will be engaged with at that point. But they will set policy. They will determine, uh, again, bylaws. They will discuss finances. They will discuss scholarships. They will discuss things that they will then bring to the, the larger body in the plenary sessions later on during the week. Okay. Um, now, there are always expectations coming out of, out of board meetings. Uh, thinking about what has gone on this past year uh, with the National Alumni Association, Lincoln University, what are some of the things that you would expect to be brought to the plenary session? Well, I would expect engagement, uh, and I think all the constituents and the uh, officers in the other positions expect engagement. We look for vision, we're looking for leadership, and we're looking for matters that we can be passionate about that will help satisfy the mission, um, whatever our, our current president, which is Alfred Harris out of the class of 69, whatever his goals are, we want to be sure we understand what those things are and how we can best help meet those goals and move the plans forward of the Alumni Association as it interfaces with the university as a whole. Okay. Well, let's start with uh, uh, Friday, the 26th, um, alumni coming in. What, what schedule? Well, okay, so Friday on the, on the 26th, we will start our registration sessions. Of course, the registration desk will be up and running by 6 o'clock in the morning. But from 7 o'clock to 6 p.m., we will take on-site registrations. We have a wonderful group of volunteers that will uh, serve, and they will uh, make sure that our registrants receive their uh, bags and their tickets, uh, their uh, short brochures, that little at-a-glance schedules, if you will, and that they understand um, what the plan for the day is um, to make sure that we have uh, single event tickets available on site for those people who did not take out full registrations and to also sell last minute or late registrations for those people who decide that it's a better bargain, which it is, for them to purchase a full registration on site even though it's late mm -hmm. at, at this point. Um, now where is this registration going to be taking place? The registration will take place in the pre-conference area and this is at the Doubletree Hotel, which is at the corner of Highway 50 and Madison Street uh, across from Historic Second Baptist Church. Okay. Uh, the hotel used to be known as the top of the round or the Holiday Inn Hotel, we all know, but now it's the Double Tree Hotel. Uh, their ballroom is called the Magnolia Room. Just outside the ballroom is a pre-conference area, and we will have several uh, banquet tables set up to engage our uh, conference participants in the registration activities. After that, we will begin our plenary session one. That will be the first of our business sessions, and again, the agenda is set by the uh, executive officers, and we don't have privy to that at this point. Um, uh, we'll take several breaks. The plenary session two, one, one and two will take place in the morning. Following after the plenary sessions on Friday at noon, there will be the Distinguished Alumni Luncheon, where uh, two alumni will be honored for their contributions to the Alumni Association. Following that, we will have one of our first breakout sessions that will discuss understanding the NCAA recruiting rules and regulations, and that will be given by alumnus Betty Kimna, who is currently our athletic director. Uh, after a brief break and that session, we will have an alumni dialogue with Dr. Kevin Rome, who, as you know, is Lincoln University's 19th president in the Magnolia Room. Following the, the dialogue, uh, there will be a presidential reception where we will journey back to the university campus in Scruggs University Center. We will meet in the ballroom and have a, a reception with our president. Uh, and following, there will be a hospitality suite for all convention registrants. Okay. Now, um, let's go back. Sure. What is uh, expected and why is uh, the NCAA recruiting rules and regulations, why is that something that the alumni need to be cognizant of? That's a great question. Um, I'm not sure I can answer that as thoroughly as, as, as uh, you would like to, like to have answered. However, I can tell you that there are some concerns when um, uh, students are recruited, and this is a nationwide issue, that sometime alums or other persons uh, get engaged in trying to bring students to university campuses, and it's best to know what is appropriate to say, what is appropriate to offer, and what is appropriate to do when trying to engage a student and bring them to a university campus. 
particularly if that person is an athlete, there are rules and regulations that must be followed by NCAA. We have to ensure that the university is not jeopardized by someone's good faith efforts to bring a student to campus and inadvertently violate NCAA rules and regulations. So we take this opportunity to make sure that uh, we put the information out there for consideration and for our information. Okay. And uh, the dialogue with Dr. Rohn, uh, what, uh, what are some of the issues, as you've spoken with uh, alumni throughout the country, uh, what are some of the things that uh, you think alumni want to hear from Dr. Rohn? How we can support his vision, how we can help him uh, continue to improve and enhance Lincoln University, how uh, he would like for us to help him continue the legacy. Uh, it is our understanding that uh, our current president is very much engaged in student affairs and ensuring uh, the well-being of our students. And we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to help ensure his vision. And then I, after that, uh, once we have the dialogue, we'll, we'll be more sure about what that is. Okay. Now let's move to Saturday, the 27th. Certainly Saturday, the 27th, we will continue our registration activities. Again, our, our, registra our registration team of volunteers will be in the Magnolia pre-conference area set up to take registrations beginning at 7 p.m. and that will continue until uh, later on uh, noon on Saturday. Um, following that we will have our prayer breakfast at 8.30 a.m. All social events uh, take place in the Magnolia Ballroom. Okay, so and, and the pre plenary events do as well. So after the prayer breakfast we will continue with plenary session three Conference registrants will have an opportunity to take lunch on their own, somewhere in the community, their choice. Um, then following that, we have another uh, breakout education session. Oh my God, OMG, they're different from us. LOL, laugh out loud, and shaking my head. Mm -hmm. So that's SMH. That is to help alumni understand. It's, it's, it's about bridging the gap. First of all, um, there's a challenge in bringing in younger alums into the association and helping to do the work of the association. Many alums are aging out of office, are aging out of active, uh, being part of active in the association. And we need to grow the association. Where there's youth, there's growth. And so we have a lot of alums that have come through a generation where they're interactive with social media constantly. These are the terms and the phrases that they use. We and those older than our group need to understand how those interactions take place, what they mean, how to use them, because we want to be relevant and, and in, in step. Not that we're trying to be the younger generation, nor do we expect them to be us in the middle or those in their, in their winter years. But we do need to have, be able to actively dialogue so we can move forward uh, positively as we uh, um, continue the work of the association. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. I was, uh, when I saw that, uh, I was saying, okay, how does this fit? Uh, now I understand. Okay. Um, what are some of the workshops that's going to be taking place on Saturday? So again, um, the first workshop would be the, oh my God, they're different than, my, than us, laugh out loud, shaking my head, or L-O-L-S-M-H. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's kind of how that goes. After the break, uh, the next session will be recruiting uh, for LU admissions one-on-one. -on -one. And again, much like the rules and regulations for NCAA recruitment, there are rules and regulations to recruiting uh, for Lincoln University. The university has standards uh, that go along with the part of its designation that is open enrollment. And it is critical for the alumni to be good ambassadors when it's time to help recruit students for the university. We want to make sure that we understand what the admissions office is looking for, what policies, what processes they go through, and what standards are set. We want to ensure to meet or exceed those standards so that we continue to draw quality students to Lincoln University and to help those who come in under open enrollment uh, fit into the university family. Okay. Um, now, Dr. Mitchell uh, will be facilitating a session entitled, You Are the Brand. Uh, what can be expected in that session? You Are the Brand is, um, it's, it's talking about establishing who we are as Lincoln University alum with respect to Lincoln University. You are the brand is mark, it's like marketing language. And we're talking about how do we represent ourselves? When, when people look at us, are we clearly identified as Lincoln alums? Uh, do we have a set, um, let me make it a little more tangible. Is there a set 
mark that we use? Is there a set logo that we use? Is there a set way that our paraphernalia and our memorabilia look? Is there a, a certain way that Lincoln, you know a Lincoln University alum from any other alum? What does being the brand mean? Dr. Mitchell is a Lincoln University alumnus uh, from the class of 1993, and we expect him to come in and motivate uh, the convention attendees. And we expect him to help us understand and those understand better how we can best represent what the Lincoln University brand or what the Lincoln University alumni brand is. Okay. Um, and now uh, we get down to the, that part of the convention that everyone enjoy, and that's the the social and the award programs that take place. On Friday afternoon, there's a Distinguished Alumni Luncheon. Uh, who are this year's recipients? Uh, this year's recipients, uh, the first recipient will be Ms. Hazel Berth. Ms. Hazel Berth graduated in the class of 1954 uh, as a Distinguished Alumni. Uh, the next award recipient will be yours truly, Sylvia Wilson. Well, congratulations. Very, thank you. I'm very humbled. Uh, a little surprised that in my uh, chapter. I'm very thankful that my chapter and then that the National Association agreed. So we will receive uh, Distinguished Alumni Awards at the luncheon. Um, after that, um, I think you asked about another social event? Yes. Is there anything else going on that Friday afternoon that's for, as for Friday is for a social Gathering well, 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 of course. Uh, uh, yes, we after after the distinguished alumni luncheon. Yes, there's also the presidential reception, which we mentioned a little earlier, and of course our hospitality suite. This gives all of our alums a chance to mingle. It's a, a mini homecoming, if mm. you will, and a, a, a chance to talk. Maybe to talk about plenary session one and two, but maybe just to catch up on what happened between these alums the last time we were together as as a body at the convention, or the last time we were together at the homecoming or the last time we were together at the presidential gala. There's a lot of opportunities for us to meet and greet, and sometimes people hit and miss a few things. So it's really good to have that opportunity to socialize and sit and talk and share beverage mm -hmm. and, and reminisce. It, okay. it's, it's really a great thing. Okay, Saturday, the Hall of Fame. So the Hall of Fame banquet. This year we have uh, six inductees into the uh, 2013 Hall of Fame uh, class. And at that banquet, we will honor Dr. Samuel Jimerson uh, posthumously out of the class of 69, uh, Mr. Kenneth Dean uh, out of the class of 69, Mr. Henry Helm, class of 1964, James W. Tippin, class of 1964, Lawrence Walls, a class of 1960, and Donald Corbett, who was a former basketball coach here at Lincoln University in the 1970s. Um. Now, all of these recipients, uh, I understand there is a somewhat of a rigorous process of going, of being selected as uh, the Hall of Fame. Do you know any criteria that uh, the National use for that? I do. I do. I don't know the entire list, but uh, as, as I understand it, um, one thing uh, uh, nominees must be able to demonstrate is a commitment to the university and a commitment to the association. That commitment can take place in the form of cash or in kind, uh, continuous support to the university, participation in events like homecoming, like the conventions, like the galas, uh, uh, participation consistently with uh, financial endowments through the foundation, scholarship participation, um, and things like that. Uh, uh, continuous uh, commitment to uh, attending Lincoln University, not only your attendance, but if you attended once, maybe now you're a legacy because after you, someone, your neighbor, your child, your niece, your nephew, your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your mom, your dad, someone else will attend Lincoln University and now you become a legacy. And then beyond your commitment directly just to Lincoln University and just to the Alumni Association, how have you impacted the community that you come from? What do you do in your local community? How have you set the standard? How have you distinguished yourself? How have you made a name for Lincoln University and for yourself? And how have you improved the community? And how have you served the community that you are now in? All those things are the short list of things that the association and nominating committees take a look at in, as far as to take in a nomination to recommend someone for an award. Okay. And I'm sure there's more. I, I'm just at a loss to name <laughs> everything at this point. Okay. And uh, wrapping it up uh, uh, is your worship service. Um, what, 
what takes place and what's, what's the expectation there? Okay, so the prayer breakfast is a way to um, memorialize many of our alums who have passed on. At last count, uh, the last planning meeting we had, I believe it was told us that there are more than 50 alums that we mm. have lost since the last prayer breakfast. Those persons will be honored. There will be a message uh, to inspire uh, the alums that attend the prayer breakfast. And then there will be a reading of the names of those who are deceased and who have gone on, and, and, and a bell will be rung. This year we will add a new dimension to the prayer breakfast, and we will honor veterans for their service, and then remember those who have gone on, uh, who have been members of the military services. Um, okay, listen. well, uh, wrapping it up, uh, could you uh, quickly go through again uh, the schedule? Uh, at a glance, I can. But if I if I may go back to Thursday, okay. Okay. So I'd like to start at Thursday, and again, that is basically our opening day, uh, where we we will have our registration and our board of directors meeting. We will have a meet and greet with Lincoln University faculty, staff, and students that are still available on campus because we are at the end mm -hmm. of the summer session. But that meet and greet is sponsored by Dr. Kevin Rome, and it, it again, Dr. Go Dr. Rome, the Alumni Association faculty, staff, and students are encouraged to participate and attend the luncheon, which will take place in Scruggs University Center, and it lasts from 12 to 1. Um, there will also be the committee meetings that follow and a board of directors meeting following that. After that, one of the capstone events for that first day is going to be our convention welcome reception. And I didn't touch on that earlier, but I'd like to touch upon okay. it now. At that welcome reception, we will have entertainment and fun and frivolity for everyone who attends. Um, that event starts at 6 p.m. and it lasts till 10 p.m. and it will be in the Magnolia Ballroom at the Doubletree Hotel. We feature this year entertainment uh, brought by the Chump Change Band and so we expect that to be a lot of fun. We will also have interactive games and activities for all to participate in and it promises to be a fun evening. Um, following the uh, welcome reception, there will be hos a hospitality room for the convention attendees. Moving on to Friday, we again pick up with registration and we start our business or our plenary sessions. Again, uh, the first two sessions in the morning, followed by our distinguished alumni luncheon, which is in the Magnolia Ballroom, and uh, that will take place from 12.30 to 2. Following the luncheon, we'll have breakout and information sessions, including a session about the NCAA recruiting rules and regulations. We will have a presidential reception and an alumni dialogue with Dr. Kevin Rome. Following the receptions, we will have a hospitality suite. I'd like to mention that on Friday, dinner is on your own. On Saturday, we pick back up with another registration and then our prayer breakfast. Following the prayer breakfast, we go into plenary session three. Lunch is on your own. And following that, we'll have several more education breakout sessions OMG, they're different than us, LOL, SMH. Another break and then recruiting for LU, admissions one-on-one, -on -one, and then you are the brand, all brought by Dr. Kenneth Mitchell. Uh, following that, the capstone event of the entire convention, the Hall of Fame banquet, uh, that will induct six uh, distinguished alums of Lincoln University. And after the banquet, uh, another hospitality suite, and this year's convention will wrap on Saturday, and we can rest on Sunday. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for sharing with us uh, what's going on. Uh, this 73rd uh, Lincoln University National Alumni uh, Convention. Uh, it, the convention occasionally comes back to Jefferson City. Um, so what, what did the, the alumni des decide on how frequently uh, the convention will return to Jefferson City? There's no hard decision. Okay. Um, what we found is that we would like to, as a, as, a, as a body of active alums, we would like to give chapters an opportunity to bid to have the convention in their city. And they will bid and bring a proposal and then encourage and then schmooze you to come out to where they're located. Mm -hmm. If Jefferson City gets in there again in the next three to five years, that's great. Mm -hmm. But we have 27 active chapters at this point. So it, you know, it depends on who wants to do the okay. work and which cities we want to go to. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. Wilson, for coming and sharing with us uh, what's going to be going on this coming week with the Lincoln University National Alumni Association. Uh, we hope that uh, you have take the time to come and uh, mingle with the alumni as they return to Jefferson City. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. God bless.